Hey everybody, Eric here from the MMG, keeping these videos short and sweet for you so you get the most bang out of your buck. And in return, all I need is for you to hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up button. That's the support I need. Please do that. Let's go. We're making a, a loft dedicated server using Steam CMD on a Windows server. I do want to mention that you cannot log in anonymously like normal. This game requires you to own it. So you need to log in with a Steam account that owns the game. All right, let's go. We're making an Aloft server. First thing you need, Steam CMD. Google. Steam. CMD all together. Hit enter. Go on to Valve's developer community right here, the top link. You want for Windows right here where it says download Steam CMD. Click on Windows. Up here towards the top, you're going to see download Steam CMD for Windows, the top link. Click on that. Go wherever your downloads go for that browser. So you can see I've now downloaded it 12 times doing these videos. Probably more than that, to be honest. But anyways, execute that some bitch. You're going to want to uh, go to it. Just click on it. Go to the folder, whatever. It's going to be in a zip folder, so you need to extract it, okay? So go to the main folder that it's in. Downloads right here with the zip folder. Right click on it. Go extract all. I recommend you put it in a folder by itself on your C drive or somewhere easy to find. You can do it anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Mine's uh, on my C drive. I have a shortcut here on my desktop. So just extract it into a folder. Only thing you're going to have is Steam CMD. Unless you've already done this, then you're going to have files like I have here. Once you do that, you need to execute it. So run it. If you're not an admin on your server, you're going to need to be. But if not, right click on it and hit run as admin. Okay. But most of you hopefully are. You're going to eventually download some files and you're going to get to a prompt right here like this that says Steam. Now we need to log in. And this is where you, we normally could do it anom anonymously, but we cannot do it on this server. So you need to type in login and then your Steam account that owns the game. Okay, once you finally get logged in, uh, so you, t you type in login space and then your username. And then it's going to tell you you need to type in your password. But when you start typing your password, it doesn't look like anything's typing in, but it is. It's just hidden. So just type it in your password as normal and hit enter, and then you should be good to log in. If you have two-factor and all that stuff, you're going to have to approve it through your Steam Guard. Always recommend that. All right, so once you're logged in, you should be at a command prompt like this. You need to type in app, A-P-P -P underscore update, U-P-D-A-T-E, and then space. And then you need to add the uh, ID is 1. Six six zero zero eight zero. So make sure you have all that right and hit enter. And now it's going to actually start to download the game files that you need and allow you to hopefully host a server here. Depending on your connection speed, you also need to make sure you have enough room in your wherever you put this Steam CMD file. This is where all these files are going to download to. So you need to make sure you have enough room wherever that is to download all these files. If not, it's going to air out on you. All right, and when it finishes downloading, it'll say app update finalized or whatever, and it's done. Um, I had already closed the window, so I'm sorry. Mine doesn't say that, but you should be at a command prompt like this on the Steam CMD window. Just type in exit to close that window out. Now we need to go back to the folder that we put Steam CMD in, so wherever you put this file. And um, we're going to look for Steam apps, common, then you should have a folder here called a loft. These are the files that we just downloaded. So you want to go into it. And then here is the server files. Now there's two PowerShells. This game uses PowerShells to start the server instead of a dot bat like normal, which is fine. You need to run this one that says a loft server no GUI create first. So you're going to want to right click on it and hit run with PowerShell. If you don't have permission to do this, it's because you're probably not an admin or PowerShell's disabled or something. Um, I'm not sure what the path forward would be for you. You're going to have to definitely be an admin probably to fix that situation. I don't think if, if PowerShell is enabled, I don't think you need to be an admin to run PowerShell though, which is ironic. But um, anyways, you want to run this. You need to let it go for a second. Let it do its thing. This is going to create the initial world for you. And then you're going to go in and there's a few settings, not a lot that you could edit on the server itself. And when it's done, it should close like it just did there. All right, now that that's done, we're going to actually go in and edit the server settings itself. So now you want to go to the Aloft server no GUI load file. And you want to right click on it and edit it. And Notepad++ or Notepad will work, whatever. 
Um, you're going to go down to about the middle of it. You're going to find this PSI arguments, no batch mode, no graphics. That's the line that we can actually make some changes to. Uh, the first one you can do is the, the server load is the map name. That's just the save file. You can make that whatever you want. Make sure you keep it in between the pounds. You can leave it default. It's fine. Uh, next up is the server name. This is whatever you want your server to show up as. But sure, Mighty Gamers is it. Just put it in between the pound symbols there. Do not put any spaces in there because I think it will not work then. So it has to all be together. Uh, next up is your log level. I would just leave that as default. Next is invisible. So, or sorry, is visible. So this means is it going to show up in the server browser or not? So if you put it to true, it will show up. Whoops. You put it to false, it will be a private server and it will not show up. Now your friends can still join you through a code that is generated when you start the server up. You just have to give them that code. I'll show you that here a little bit later. The other settings are private island, whether it's set to true or false. This makes the starting island either public or private. So I would probably leave it set to false if you're hosting multiple people on the server, but that's up to you. Then is player count. I think max is eight. That's what it is by default. You can lower it if you want to. Next setting is if you want to change the server port. Again, I would just leave it as default unless you want to change it for a reason. And then the last ones are the admin. So you can add two admins at least. And here you have to have their Steam GUID to add them. So you would punch that GUID in right here in between the pound symbols for the first admin. And for the second admin, you do the same. I'm assuming you can add more than this, to be honest. You probably just need to add admin and then their GUID. Anyways, that is the settings that you can change in the server, and now you're ready to go. All right, once you have all those changes made, you want to make sure you go up and hit File and Save to save your changes, and then you can close out this window, and now you're ready to actually execute this. So right-click on it and go run to PowerShell. It's going to load the PowerShell. Give it a second to load. So if you make it so it's private, then if you see this server room code.txt right here, or it's going to pop up here in the display window, either one. I'll show you here when it's done. There you go, server ready. And then this number right here, this 107933, that's actually your friend code. So if we look in this server room code.txt, it's gonna be the same. And so that changes every time you restart the server though. But if you give this to your friends, then they could join your server even if it's not visible. All right, once you get the game loaded up, you wanna to go to multiplayer, and then you're gonna join a game. So you're gonna join your dedicated server, right? Make sure your region set. I don't think there's a way to set it for on your side. It must do it off of your IP. Um, so I'm in the US, so obviously I click US, and here we are, Mature Mighty Gamers. There is always one person on. I think the server running itself, it, it counts that as a person, so don't be alarmed. Um, when I logged into my server, there was no one else on there, but it, I do think that's how it works. And I just click Join Game here to join it. Now, if, if you can't see your server, this is where you enter the game code that we found. So the 107933 was my code. You have to pull your code and hit confirm and then hit join again. And then that's the way you can join if your server is set to private. So this would be the way to keep it where only you and your friends are on the server itself. So, all right, that is a loft. That's how you set up your own server. Again, I keep these videos short and sweet. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know uh, how you're liking a loft. Thanks for watching and have yourself a great day.